Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 66 again we are under analysis and interpretation and today we are going to cover impact of policies and estimates yesterday we covered financial ratios now we are going to cover under the same topic analysis and interpretation impact of policies and estimates so let's start accounting policies and estimates why is it so important why we have to learn because if you change your accounting policies or your estimate it can have a significant impact on the users who are going to take decision based on the financial information based on the information that you are giving through the financial statements and also the ratios that they are going to calculate based on that if you change your accounting policies and estimate the ratios that you are going to uh, calculate based on that will also change so based on the ratios only your uh, decision will change okay that's the reason why this is so important when you have to analyze the company the performance of the company this also will come into the picture but this will not affect the entity's cash generation because accounting policies and estimates these are profit figure this can only have an impact on your statement of financial position and statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income this cannot have an impact on the cash generation why because profit and loss account we make uh, using the concept accrual uh, accrual concept but cash flow is on a cash basis it's not on a accrual basis we receive cash we record it we pay cash we record it so there there is no estimation and anything like that so estimation and all cannot have an impact on the cash generation okay now this is important for three reasons this accounting policies and estimates number one accounting standards they permit a choice there are some standards which gives you a choice use this or that for example is 60 is 40 is 16 uh, property plan and equipment what does it say it says that you can either value your assets using cost model or fair value model the choice is yours so since it's giving you a choice you can take this to your advantage for example if you see cost model is giving you a better ratios better figure and shows that uh, shows your company in a good light you will use a cost model if you feel that fair value is better you can use fair value so you can manipulate these things estimates are used here judgments are used here okay that's the reason but this is very important second judgment okay making estimates and all requires judgment in some areas not all the areas for example depreciation allowances provisions okay and third if there is no relevant accounting standard you have to make an estimate but this is not uh, the case this is very rare okay you will not come across in your exam that they don't have an accounting standard most of the time accounting standard is there so this usually comes when there's a choice and when judgment has to be made that's why this is very important if you didn't have to make any judgment if everything was given to you as it is use this rate only no choice is given to you then the issue does not come accounting policy and estimates uh, they, that issue will not come because then you don't have to estimate anything then that will not have an impact on your financial status but because in reality we know that we have some uh, choices some judgments we have to make because of that it can have an impact on the our ratios and hence the decision that users are going to make based on that okay that's the reason why this is very important so this is a very short video okay uh, that's it for this now we are going to do some questions okay two questions one is uh, accounting policy choices how this is going to have an impact we'll now see the demo of it okay here there are two entities entity a and b okay so they are classified as investment property okay that is under is 40 okay i'm sure that you know the standard which standard it falls into both are identical both the building have the cost of 10 million okay they bought it at 10 million only both a and b but the policy is different okay and both have expected useful life 50 years till there it's same but there's a fair value of 11 million okay the fair value for both will be 11 million but the policy is such that entity a will use cost model entity b will use the fair value model you can see they are using two different models because choice is there you can use this or that so now we'll see what uh, what how the difference come and how we are going to come up with a solution for this okay so now you can see statement of financial position entity a is giving you 9.8 how 9.8 because 
they bought it for 10 million and remember entity a is using cost model so 10 divided by 50 years to find the depreciation which is 0 0.2 so from that 10 million cost deduct depreciation which is 0 0.2 you can check also below under your statement of profit and loss depreciation is 0 0.2. So 10 minus 0 0.2 is 9.8 in your statement of financial position. Entity B is using fair value model. Fair value is 11 million. Okay. So just use uh, put 11 million for entity B. Coming to depreciation, entity A will have 0 0.2 depreciation and entity B, there's a gain on investment property. What is that gain? From 10 to 11. Cost is 10 for both. But fair value is 11. So from 10 to 11, that increases 1 million. That has to be recorded as a gain on investment property for B. Okay. So now, there are no difference. Assuming that there are no other differences other than this uh, accounting policy choice. That A is using cost model. B is using fair value model. Which entity will give you higher profit? You have to write those things in your answer about the profit, about their liquidity position, about their gearing, basically ratios only you're talking about. Entity B will report higher profit, you see. If you look at the statement of profit and loss, entity B, we don't know the actual profit, we just only know the gain and depreciation, but looking at it, entity B will report higher profit. Because higher profit, so their earnings per share will also be higher for entity B. Okay, as you can see, there's a gain for entity B. Okay, how higher earnings per share for B because they will also show higher equity also. Okay, higher equity also will be shown in the statement financial position for B. So because of this, even gearing will reduce, which is good for B is good because higher equity means gearing will reduce for B I'm talking about. Okay. So as this example shows the fact that IS40 permits a choice in accounting policy. So because IS40 gives you an accounting policy use cost of family model, what happens? Now it became very hard for me to compare the two entities because one is using cost, one is using family. Definitely entity B will show you, show you higher profit. But that but does it mean that entity B is actually uh, generating this high profit? No. It is just the reflection of the accounting policy choices that they both have uh, implemented and it's different so the choices are different how can you expect uh, both of them to uh, you know how can you compare the comparison does not make any sense you see so this is an issue this is a problem it reduces the comparability now we will move on towards test your understanding three okay and do a question where the differences in the policy will have an impact on the accounting ratios Test your understanding three. Okay. Entities A and B are identical in all respects except for their application of IS 16. Entity A is using cost model, entity B is using devaluation model, and entity B records a revaluation gain at the beginning of the current reporting period. Okay, so you have been given the statement of profit and loss, revenue, operating cost, and profit from operation, as you can see. Revenue is same for both, okay. Be because of this revaluation in B, okay, you can see the depreciation is higher for B, hence, profit for A is higher than profit for B, okay. Statement of financial position share capital is same, retained earnings, uh, blah blah, total equity borrowings, total equity and liability, okay. So, now what are you required to do here using ratio analysis, compare the financial statements of A and B. Explain how the differences may impact stakeholder perception. Okay, so to do this question, you need to know what are the ratios you need to calculate. Okay, yesterday when we were doing the financial ratios, okay, we covered multiple ratios. There are so many ratios. Okay, so you don't have to calculate all the ratios, only those ratios which are relevant for this. For example, by looking at this, you have been given the statement of profit and loss from the statement of profit and loss what are the ratios you can calculate you can calculate operating profit right margin you can calculate uh, return on capital employed and what else these are very common ratios and gearing ratio 
okay this is very important so the three ratios that I'm going to calculate are operating profit margin O B M okay so for A how do I and for B okay when you present do simultaneously for both okay so for operating profit margin it is simply the profit from operations divided by sales and same for this this divided by revenue so this will be 40 divided by 220 into 100 and this will be same revenue profit operation pro, uh, operating profit changed 10 divided by 220 into 100 so looking at this definitely you know which one will give you the higher operating profit margin right so this is 18.2 percent and this one is just 4.5 percent you can see the difference now coming to the second type of ratio you can pick up any ratio okay it's up to you because here they didn't specify which are the ratio but these are very common ratios whenever they tell make sure that you at least cover uh, if not both gross and operating at least cover one of them okay for example operating profit margin return on capital employed these are very common ratios okay we are not going to cover the other ratios for example data collection period or investor collection period or current ratio or um, what else is there we cannot calculate current ratios and all you just see we don't have any information about the current assets or current liabilities so we cannot calculate the current ratio okay equity ratio also no we don't know the price we cannot calculate for pe ratio we cannot calculate you understand so those ratios also we cannot calculate from the information that we are given okay whenever you uh, you are in a doubt which ratio always see which information is given to you and from that information what are or what uh, types of ratios you can calculate and how many ratios you can calculate for example here you don't have current assets current type data so it's simple you cannot calculate current ratio okay data collection period all those are not so much asked and not so important okay if it's asked then they will give you the information regarding debtors or creditors here they didn't give you so you cannot calculate that also okay but yes operating profit margin return on capital employed gearing ratio this three ratios you can you can cover okay not even interest cover we don't ha have the information of interest finance cause we don't have so return on capital employed will be what it is simply your profit from operation divided by your total equity and liability this so it is 40 divided by 240 10 divided by 420 okay 40 divided by 240 again into 100 10 divided by 420 which one will give you higher this thing we again know that a will give you the higher return on capital employed it is 16.7 percent please do these calculations on your own and check and whereas this is just 2.4 percent very less now the third type of ratio the last ratio okay these are the three ratios with the information given you can calculate gearing ratio to show how risky it is which one is more risky gearing is a uh, two uh, formula is given debt over uh, equity or debt divided by debt plus equity okay so i'm going to most of the time i use this one and uh, even in your exam also if you see the marking scheme they uh, use this the second method debt divided by debt plus equity and i feel it's more uh, you know suitable also but anyway you can even use debt over equity also no harm so debt will be your uh, borrowings your long-term liability don't take your current liabilities okay so both are 100 in this case so 100 divided by 100 plus equity we have to add same here also it's 100 so 100 plus equity part okay equity part you just have to take this or you or what you can uh, do here is you don't have to add this 100 you can just take 240 from here because this 240 already added debt and equity this 240 or you can uh, simply take the two individual figure for example borrowing 100 and your total equity 140 it's the same thing 140 and here it's 320 320 for b the equity okay when you are taking equity 
place uh, you have to take uh, you have to see that it's not just the share capital you are taking you have to take the other components of equity you have to take the retained earnings the total equity you have to take understood it's not just the share capital this is the common mistakes which many candidates they do okay so now looking at this just looking at the figure don't calculate tell me which one will give you higher gearing a or b it is a it's a because debt is same but what is if you see only the equity equity here is less for a and here it's more so because it's less it will give you a higher gearing this is 41.7 this is 23.8 percent now that's not enough you have to compare and write about it i'm not going to do the writing part i'm just going to explain you okay writing part and all you can do it on in your own words that's not a big issue starting one by one category by category you have to take starting with operating profit margin operating profit margin if you see a is higher why is that because b was using revaluation so because of revaluation b is having a higher depreciation you check here they are having 210 whereas this is 180 revenue is same but here because of that revaluation depreciation will be charged on that revaluated amount the higher amount so depreciation will be higher under b that's the reason profit from operation is less under b so because of that your operating profit margin is also less it suffers you can see from the calculations this is this is the way that you have to compare and then write about it why if something is low then it is low why because it is using revaluation model from revaluation depreciation is higher so profit from operation is less that's why operating profit margin is less one by one that link coming to the so first one is over second return on capital employed if you see okay what about return on capital employed that is also same why because of revaluation revaluation will increase the equity in the statement of financial position the entity bs why because that revaluation will be recorded either in the it will be recorded in the equity section only okay or return earnings or it will be transfer it will be returned under revaluation reserve or it will be transferred to the retained earnings the revaluation part so because of that higher equity will be there for b so because of higher equity return on capital employed will be lower for b why because your capital employed is taken down here in the down part you see here it is 420 whereas this is just 240 b is higher that's why it's giving a lower return on capital employed that means they're less efficient b is less efficient than a coming to c gearing definitely you know that b is more a is more riskier than b 41.7 compared to 23.8 why because of gearing because a b has a higher gearing compared to uh, a that's why b is less risky than a so this is the final conclusion that you have to give okay so that's it for test understanding three so that's it and um, next video i will be covering the statements of cash flow what are the uses of statements of cash flow how are we going to use it to analyze the company so till then thanks for watching and see you in the next video